again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today our project is the button motif. And the beauty of this is that it is a continuous join as you go motif. So instead of crocheting all these little circles and then sewing in two ends per circle, which would be a veritable nightmare. No, this is a continuous join as you go technique. So this entire project was done with one continuous length of yarn. Yes, it's a beautiful thing. And it's really quite attractive and it's deceptively simple once you get the hang of it naturally. Okay, so now this particular piece, I used Lion Brand's Pound of Love in the colorway of denim and the entire project, I actually, I took notes. Yes, I did, I took notes. So in this project, the length of this wrap that I made is 72 inches long by about 19 inches wide. I used one skein and I had this much left over. And, you know, if, if that's any indication, okay? Also, I used doo -doo -doo, a size 5.5, a size I crochet hook. And as far as the yardage with the Pound of Love, it is over a thousand yards. So you get a lot of, you know, what a yardage, uh, you know, and you get a lot of mileage with this particular stitch because it is so lacy. And as far as the, the little motifs are concerned, uh, it is uh, 10 motifs wide by 35 motifs long. So that is a lot of little motifs. But again, it really is quite simple once you get the hang of it. Um, and for today, I'm going to be using, again, Pound of Love, and this is Elephant Gray, and I'm going to be using the same size crochet hook for the tutorial. And this is an awesome stitch uh, as far as motifs go. If you want to do, say, a scarf or a wrap or a table runner or if you go really, really fine, maybe even sort of curtains, that would be really cute. Um, go crazy, you know, maybe uh, a throw or something to drape over the back of your sofa. Possibilities are endless. The only thing that I would stress is that I would strongly suggest using a solid color. And that is because we're, we're creating these motifs, half of the motif on one row and then half of the half of the uh, motif on the way back and therefore if you're using a color change yarn it's going to look sort of split up um, you know if the the bottom half of the circle is one color and the top of the half is another color that might sort of ruin the sort of the the trick behind this stitch you'll see what I mean as we go on but I would, personally, I would recommend using a solid color. However, if you want to use a variegated yarn, I would suggest perhaps using a, like a speckle or a quick change variegated. Um, it's my personal, you know, input, take it for what you will. That being said, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start with the first motif and the first tier because it's all about levels here. So starting off with our slip knot and a chaining of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And then into the one, two, three, four, five, the fifth chain from the hook, slip stitch, to create a ring, like so. And then slip stitch into the remaining three chains.
There we are. And you're probably thinking, this looks really weird. Don't worry, it will make sense as we continue. So I'm going to turn the work and then into this ring, we need eight double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that is the first half of our first motif. Now, you can make this as wide or as long as you want to. Just add another motif. So we're going to do a couple of these. So going to, again, chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then again into the fifth chain, one, two, three, four, five, do a slip stitch. And then slip stitch into the remaining three chains. Slip. Slip. And slip. And then turn your work. And again, into the ring, eight double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm pretty sure that this is eight. Let me see here. Okay, so that's where we did our slip stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. Okay, so I think for this swatch, I'm going to do uh, four wide so that it really is going to be a decent and substantial swatch for you. So let's do two more together. Hmm? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By the way, what I did for my particular project, I did the entire length of the project because I didn't know if it was going to be a, a scarf or a wrap, and I only wanted to use one skein. So I figured as long as I had the length, the width would be kind of arbitrary at that point. And I ended up with, as I said, uh, it was 10 wide, and for me, that worked out just fine. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, slip stitch, and then slip into the next three stitches. One, two, and three, turn the work, and then eight doubles into that ring. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And then we'll do one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, fifth chain, slip stitch. And then slip stitch into the next three chains. One more. There we go go, turn, and then eight doubles into that ring. 
one, two, three, four, oh, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, and eight, right? Two, four, six, eight. Yes, good. Okay. So this is what we have so far. We have the bottom halves of our first row of motifs. Okay. We shall continue. All right. So when you have the length and or width that you're happy with, on this last motif, we already did eight double crochets. We need a total of 15 to finish this last motif. So still going into that center ring, we did eight. So adding some more, I'm going to have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, and then into this space in between our motifs, slip stitch. And that closes up that end motif right there. And then into the, the ring of the next motif, seven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And again, close it up by slip stitching in between the motifs. And then into the next ring, you guessed it, seven doubles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, close it up, slip stitch in between our motifs. And now we've come to the last motif. Now, we're not going to completely finish up because we want to create more tiers. So that being said, we're only going to do four double crochets into the center ring because we're gonna finish up this motif at the very end. And again, it will make more sense later as we go on. So let's only do four doubles into the ring right here. One. two, three, and four. So as you can see, we have our cute little circles just doing their thing. And uh, we shall continue on with the second tier. Now, what you do want to be aware of though, is there is a there is definitely a right side and a wrong side to these motifs now they will get twisted okay that is kind of inevitable you know because there's nothing anchoring them right now there will be though but right now what you want to keep in mind is that if you do half of your motif you know one you know right side and the other half wrong side you will notice it. Uh, it will look incongruous. So that being said, 
uh, as you can see on the edge here, the way that the, the stitches are sort of facing us, this would be the right side, and then this would be the, the wrong side. So you are going to want to have your motifs right side and right side. Otherwise, it will stand out somewhat. And I, I'm i not a complete perfectionist, but I do like things to work out. So yes, you, you do want to differentiate which is the right and which is the wrong. Okay? Little, little point of note. All right, so we shall continue on with the next tier. Okay. Okay, now for the second tier. This is where things get interesting, as if they weren't already interesting, right? So, we are going to start with our first motif of the second tier. It's going to be a little bit different than the rest of them, but we will get through this. So, again, starting by chaining up eight. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. And then into the fifth chain again, slip stitch to create the ring, and then three more slip stitches, one in, in each chain. One, two, three. Turn this little doodad here, and then into the ring, we only need four double crochets for this first motif. Just four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, and you're probably thinking to yourself, this looks really weird. Well, yeah, I get that. But trust me on this one. So for the second motif, the second motif we are actually going to join to, sorry, let me just get myself a little situated here. The second motif that we're going to make, we are going to join to the second motif down here. Bear with me. So we're going to start again with a chaining of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and again into the fifth chain, slip stitch, one, two, three, four, yes, okay, into the fifth chain, slip stitch, and then slip stitch into the next three chains, one, two, and three, turn your little doodad. Now into this ring, only do three double crochets. We did four in that first one, now we do three. One, two, and Three. Now this is where things get interesting. Okay, so if we position our work so that the wrong side is facing us, okay, don't, do not worry about this first one of the second tier that we created. Do not worry about this one. We're only focusing on the one that we're working on right now. So we're going to need to go into this second motif here, and we need to join. And again, make sure that the wrong side is facing you, okay? Now, the way that we're stitching it, this is the right side, this is the wrong side. Bear with me. So, <laughs> what we're going to do is going into the, the top of this second motif, which is the fourth double crochet. So, one, two, three, for the top right there, and it helps if you sort of separate. See, we've got one, two, three, and four. So into this fourth double crochet, slip stitch, one, two, three, 
like so. So it's now connected. And then continuing to work into our ring. So what I like to do is I just sort of like flip this up and continue working into the ring with five more double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And let's see what we got. So as you can see, these stitches and these stitches are right side, and these stitches are all right side. And it's joined, and like I said, don't worry about that first part of the first motif of the second tier, because it works. Now, granted, it may want to twist itself and so on and so forth, but it's locked in place. It's good to go. So now we can continue with the next two motifs of uh, tier two. Say that five times fast. <laughs> the next two motifs of tier two. Yes. All right. We shall continue. Okay, so continuing right along for the next motif again, chain eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, into the fifth chain, slip, and then slip into the next three, one, and two, and three. Turn your doodad. Three double crochets. That's one, and two, and three. Okay, again, we need to be working on the, the back side, the, the, the wrong side, if you will. Okay, now this is the right side, and this is the wrong side. So again, into the fourth double crochet. So again, it helps if you just sort of separate your stitches a little bit. So one, two, three, and four. So into that fourth double crochet, slip stitch. and then sort of scoot this one up, grab it, turn your work so that you're continuing on with the, the front side, and then five more double crochets into the ring. One, two, three, four, and five. Like magic. It's fabulous. Okay, let's do the last one. So that's chaining up of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, into that fifth chain, slip stitch, then slip stitch into the next three chains. Turn your doodad, and then into that ring, three double crochets. Turn your work so that we have the, the wrong sides facing us. Find the fourth double crochet. So that's one, two, three, four. So into that fourth double crochet stitch, slip stitch. Flip up your doodad. Grab it. Turn your work so that it's the front side. Now, because this is the last motif, 
we need a total of 15 double crochets, if I'm not mistaken. And so we shall, we shall, oh, actually, no, it was a 15 before. Now it's 12 because we already did three here, right? So 12 double crochets. See, I caught myself. So into the ring, 12 doubles. It's only 15 for the first tier at the end, so 12. So we've got one, two, three. No, oh, I had three. Okay. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then slip stitch in between the motifs to close it on up. And then seven double crochets, just like we did before to finish up this motif. So seven doubles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pull out some more yarn. There we go. Okay, so I got my seven doubles. Close it up with a slip stitch in between the motifs. Seven more doubles for this motif right in the ring there. Seven doubles. One. Two. Three. Four. Five six and seven. Close up this motif by slip stitching in between. And then we have reached the end of the road once again. So into the ring of the last motif, just four doubles. One, two, three, and four. And there you go. So basically, this second tier that we just did, basically you're just going to keep repeating that over and over and over until your piece is as long as you want it to be. Um, and then it's a matter of finishing up this extra edge here. So let's press on. Okay, because I really like to be thorough for you all, I'm going to be doing a third tier. I mean, really, you can just keep repeating the second tier ad infinitum, but I would like to do a repeat for you uh, because, well, I like spending time with you guys and making sure that you understand what it is that I'm trying to explain. So let's pull out a bit more yarn and proceed on our merry way. So as we did with tier two, going to chain up eight. One, two, three, four. There we go. Very good. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And then into the fifth chain slip stitch to create the ring, and then slip stitch into the next three chains to get to the edge. One, and two, and three. Okay, then turn your little doodad, and four doubles into the ring. One, two, 
three and four. Okay, then going directly into the, the next motif with a chaining of eight. One, seriously, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight into the fifth mo fifth chain. I, I'm getting tongue tied. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth chain of this motif. Slip stitch. And then three more slip stitches. There we are. One more. Groovy. Okay. Turn your little doodad. And then three doubles into this ring. We did four. Now we're doing three. One. Two. And three. Okay. Now, again, working with the, the wrong side facing us. Okay. So second motif, we need the fourth double. So we've got one, two, three, four. So slip stitch into that fourth stitch there. And then flip this little guy up, turning your work to the right side. And then five doubles into that ring. One, two, three, four, and five. It's a thing of beauty. Okay, so moving on to the next motif, chain eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, into the fifth slip stitch, and then three more slip stitches, one, two, and three, turn your little doodad, three doubles into the ring, there we are, again, pull out more yarn as needed, working into the, the wrong side, Find the fourth stitch of our next motif. So one, two, three, four. So slip stitch into that stitch. Flip up your little guy there, grab the ring, and then five doubles into the ring. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then go to our last one. Chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then into the fifth chain, once again, slip stitch. And then slip stitch into the next three. One. Two. And three. Turn your little doodad. And three doubles into the ring. Turn your work so that it is the, the wrong side facing you. Find the fourth double. One, two, three, four. Right in there with a slip stitch. There we 
There we are. Flip up your little guy, grab the ring, turning your work so that it's right side facing you, and then into that ring, because this is the, the last motif of our row, 12 doubles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, and then of course to finish off this motif, slip stitch in between your motifs. And there you go. All right, so as you can see, Tier 2 and Tier 3 have been, well, pretty much the same. Now, what I'm going to now show you is when your piece is big enough and you're ready to finish your piece, well, this is another reason why I strongly suggest using a solid color of yarn because when you finish up your project, we're going to be going straight across and then all the way down. So if you have a yarn that changes color along the top edge and the side edge, it's all going to be pretty much the same color if you're working with a color change yarn. So you're going it's going to get a little like a little stripey weirdness here. So to complete the illusion that it's, you know, um you know, to, to complete the illusion that, you know, you have all these little separate motifs that are connected as if you had crocheted each one and then joined it to the next. Um, if you're using a solid color, it works that much better. Um, you know, I hope this makes sense. So let us continue and finish off the top and the side edge. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Alrighty. All right, so let's finish up this piece, shall we? Okay, so we have this one done because we did our three doubles and then our 12 doubles to finish up this motif. Now we're gonna be following suit uh, with seven and seven in each of these. This one's gonna be a little bit different though. So let's hop, skip, and jump over there. So into this motif ring, seven doubles. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Slip stitch in between our motifs, and then seven doubles into this ring, this motif. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And then finish up this motif with a slip stitch. Okay, so now the the end motif here, we need a total of 11 more double crochets to go into this ring. So, one, two, three, four, Five, six, 
six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, then close this one up with a slip stitch in between. So that one's done. So seven into this next ring. One. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Close it up with a slip stitch in between the motifs. Now in the last one, we already have most of this motif done, so we only need to do three doubles into the center ring. One, two, and three. And then to finish this up, it's a little bit fiddly, but we're going to try and get into the, the top of this first bit that we started. Just go right in to the top of here, right there, and slip stitch. And then of course you can cut your yarn, pull out the tail, and sew in your ends. And there you have it. With one length of yarn, we managed to create 12 little motifs all connected with one strand of yarn and uh, you only have two ends to sew in. It is a thing of beauty. I keep saying that but that's because I mean it and I love it so. So let, let's get a nice, a nice aerial view of what we've accomplished here. Da 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 Great. Okay, so like I was saying before, now I'm sure that it makes a bit more sense to you that if we used a color change yarn that as we're going across this way, if the color changes, you know, from, you know, here to here, and then it's like, oh, so at this point from here to here on the first tier, you got half as one color, half as another color, and then where is it going to change on the, the second tier, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, last but not least, as you are finishing up your last tier, this top row is going to be the same color as this edge, you know, this edge side here, finishing up these motifs. So I would strongly suggest just use a solid color yarn. And I think that the results in keeping the illusion alive will be most pleasing. <laughs> so listen, guys, I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial. I loved it. The project itself was a lot of fun. It was very easy to make, and it worked up pretty quickly. By the way, this particular piece I will be putting up for sale in my Etsy store momentarily. And so keep your eyes peeled because also I have quite a few other items up there as well. Link, of course, is in the description box down below as per usual. And I want to thank all of you for joining me today. And if you like this tutorial, please show your support. Give a little thumbs up. I always appreciate your appreciation. You know I do. And of course, also, do check out my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, for video game playthrough and commentary. A lot of fun. would like to see you there. And uh, yes, yeah, so listen, until next time, you know what to do. I want all of you to stay inspired.
stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Have a good day, everybody, and bye for now.